I'm Van Bean, Scientific Principles. Welcome to the Emerson School Science Fair, said a big sign over the cafeteria door. There was the principal standing by the door, saying hello to the parents. She was smiling, but Bean thought you could never be too careful about principles. I know a shortcut, she said to her mom and dad. Let's go through the kitchen. Once they were inside, Bean and her parents met up with Ivy and her mom. Where's your project, girls? asked Ivy's mom. Our class is over there, said Bean quickly. Let's go. Sure enough, there was Miss Aruba Tape next to a table marked Room 12, Global Warming. Before her parents could start yawking with Miss Aruba Tate, Bean dragged them over to a bench where five kids were sitting in a row. Look, she pointed, that's Vanessa's project. Her mom and dad looked. Looks like a pack of kids to me, her dad said. What's the project? Wait, you'll see, said Bean. Five, yelled Vanessa, holding a small clock. Four, three. I have to go to the bathroom, said one of the kids. No, you don't. Two, one, go. All together, the five kids took a deep breath and held it. These are my brothers and sisters, Vanessa explained to the watching parents. We're reducing carbon dioxide by not breathing out. Toby can hold his breath for 76 seconds. If everyone stopped breathing out for 15 minutes a day, the world would be a lot cooler. She looked at her clock again. Five, four, three, two, one. Whew. The kids blew out their hell of breaths. Their faces were red. Are you guys doing yours soon? Vanessa called to Ivy. Ivy made a shh face and turned to her mom. Come on, mom. I want to show you Mac Adams' line car. Mac Adams was, was hiding under the table, but he had a real lime with a paper clip and a penny in it and, and his drawing on the top of the table. It smelled good. Next door was Eric's project. He hadn't had time to build the garbage robot, so he had just used one of his toy robots to show his idea. A little classic man had just tossed a clump of paper on the ground. He was smiling. He had no idea that behind him a robot was glaring, waiting to whack him on the head. Eric had also made a poster. It read, clean up or else. Next to Eric's robot was a vacuum cleaner. Dusset's idea was to vacuum up all the heat put it in a giant bag and send it to outer space. In real life, it would have it would have to be a special vacuum cleaner, but he had brought in a regular. As an example. So that's where it went, his mom said. Margot Lee had made a picture of Earth with mirrors sticking up all over. She said that the mirrors would reflect the sun's rays back out into space. Wow, said Bean's dad, looking at her picture. Pretty good idea. Bean almost said, wait till you see ours, but she didn't. She looked at Ivy and made a mouth sipping sign. Ivy nodded. Drew had made a baking soda and vinegar volcano. It didn't have much to do with global warming, but it was fun to watch the foam spur out of the top. He had put green food coloring in the vinegar. Emma and Zuzu had taken about 200 pictures of themselves digging holes and planting trees. There was also a picture of Rose, the yard duty, tell, telling at them for digging holes in the school lawn. Underneath, Emma had written, doesn't care about global warming. But Ivy, said Ivy's mom, where's your project? Ivy gave Bean a help me look, but then, just in the nick of time, Miss Arubate interrupted. Excuse me, may I borrow your daughters, she asked. It's almost time, she said to Ivy and Bean. We have to go do our project, explained Bean to her parents. But what is it, asked her mom. It's a secret, said Miss Arubitate. You're going to find out in a few minutes, right girls? Right, they agreed. Grown-ups don't usually do what kids tell them to. So Bean and Ivy had asked Miss Arubitate to give the orders. 
Miss Arubate spoke into a microphone. All available parents, please come to the back of the cafeteria. Come to the back of the cafeteria. She had to say it 12 times before the parents obeyed. And they got get mad at us if they have to say things twice, whispered Bean to Ivy. Finally, a group of grown-ups was clustered at, at the back of the cafeteria. Okay, said Mr. Rubitate. This is Bean, she pointed to Bean. And this is Ivy, she pointed to Ivy. Follow them. The other teachers and I will stay with the kids. Is this your project, asked Bean said. Yes, said Bean. Come on, follow us. Where are we going? Asked someone's mom. Just outside, said Ivy. Not far, come on. How long is this going to take? Asked another mom. Not long, don't worry, said Bean. With grown-ups crowded behind them, they walked across the cafeteria and out the door into the cool night air. The grown-ups were mumbling things like, what's going on? And it's late and sorry when they bumped into each other. But since the teacher had told them to, they all followed Ivy and Bean across the playground to the lawn. The light from the cafeteria was very dim, you could just barely see that the lawn was covered with rugs and blankets. Ivy and Bean stopped, and the grown-ups bunched up around them. Here's what's going to happen, said Bean. There's a blanket or rug or, or yoga mat for each of you. We'll take you out with our flashlights and show you a good spot. Then you just lie down. And then what, asked Ivy's mom. She sounded worried. And then you rest, said Ivy. Don't be nervous, she added to her mom. I'll be right here. What does this have to do with global warming, asked Dusset's mom. Ivy smiled mysteriously, but no one could see her in the dark. Just try it, she said. Ivy and Bean showed all the grown-ups where to lie down. It was lucky that Miss Arubitate had brought extra towels because there were more grown-ups than they had planned for. Even the principal wanted to lie down. Bean gave her an extra blanket all to herself. Soon there were grown-ups scattered all across the grass in the dark. They looked like laundry. Now, said Bean in a loud voice, look up into the sky. Smell how nice the grass is. Listen to the tree trees and just rest. Don't talk, don't do anything, and don't worry, you're totally safe.